Um, what's up guys welcome to the podcast me and colton went to the game the last blazer game of the season was that friday night i don't even remember i'm still hung over from it so that lets you know how that night went for us it was fun but i don't really remember a lot about the game the best part the halftime entertainment red panda went ham look her up on youtube guys that was crazy but the the season is finally over mercifully mercifully over and now we got the draft in the off season coming up definitely going to be the most exciting time of the year for the blazers as it has been the last couple of years draft lottery incoming what do you guys think Blazers is going to end up on the board. Who do you think they're going to take? Colton, we'll start with you. Well, starting off, I just want to say it was a pretty fun game going to that game. Uh, I think there was some highs and some lows in the game itself. And uh, Scoot had a pretty good game. Not a he lot did. of minutes. He didn't get to close out the game, which kind of unfortunate if you're a fan, but we're, you know, you're in it for the long term. But he had some exciting moments in that game he went like six of seven from three had a great steal and a dunk poster dunk on the fast break and seven assists uh and ended up with 30 points so that like uh, catch and shoot three at the shot clock buzzer was hype too yeah yeah he had a good game and he's been actually playing a lot better over the last couple weeks which is always nice to see going into the end of the year uh draft lottery i'm i'm excited you know thanks to the hornets and the spurs for allowing the Blazers to slide even farther and end up in a tie with the Hornets. Uh, you know, and Riley can give the breakdown on the percentages because he, you know, I don't want to steal his Riley stat, right? Riley's neato stat of Riley's, the day. Yeah, we don't want to get sued. Riley's <laughs> fun time stat of the day. Uh, but my my prediction as to what's going to happen, I think because the gods love love putting conundrums on the Blazers. The Blazers are going to end up with the number one overall pick. I, I just had this feeling it's going to happen. And it kind of fills me less with excitement and more with uh, what are they going to do? Because Dread. I just, I just have this idea that this is going to be one of those drafts where there's no consensus number one overall pick. So who's going to get the pick to make the whiff? The Blazers, right? Because it's happened, you know, I'm kind of PTSD uh, in the past where, you know, you get that high pick and you got a lot of prospects or prospects that are even or close. So I feel like the Blazers are going to get the number one pick. They're going to end up with SAR, which, you know, is fall far for SAR. It's it's not a bad spot to be, but it will, it will bring something we like to call fit issues here because, you know, he's not that great of a, a shooter. Or a score. So play, do you play him with Aiton? Do you run the Twin Towers for now? I think that's what's going to happen. Um, I will be excited for it because Sar is a good prospect, especially on the defensive end. But honestly, this is just me. The Blazers might be better off landing at like the number two spot and picking up Risha Shea because he's a great shooter and is that big wing we've talked about in our draft breakdown videos. So that's my thought process. I think the Blazers are going to end up lucky enough and end up at number one. But worst thing that can happen before I leave it to Riley is the Blazers get the seventh pick. That's as far as they can slide. And they also should have a, a pick from Golden State in the middle of the first round. So pretty good picks overall, no matter what, even in the worst case scenario this season. I did not get the opportunity to go to the Blazers' last home game of the year, but uh, I was watching carefully at, during their actual last game of the year, last night against the Kings, as Delano Banton went 0 for 15 from 3, um, just to prove prove where he fits in on this team moving forward, which is, you know, as tank lieutenant. I mean, he was he was there for us when we needed him most, you know, Chauncey sent him out there with the goal of making damn sure that we did not fall from that draft position and, and he got it done for us. So, you know, shout out for that O of 15 three point shooting percentage night because that's that's impressive. 
Um, so the way that things shook out at the end of the regular season is kind of interesting. We were thinking the Blazers were likely going to be have like the fifth best odds. Um, and that's not what ended up happening. Uh, so the way that the NBA draft works is that the, t the worst three seeds usually have a 14% chance for the number one pick because we tied for the third worst. They kind of split that difference. And so both us and the Hornets end up with about a 13.3. They have 13.2% chance at the number one pick. Um, just a little bit worse than that 14% that Detroit and Washington have. So, you know, there is a good chance that we end up um, at number one or number two, potentially number three even. And what's weird is that this year, I don't think it actually matters that much whether we're at number one or number two. Um, you know, the only thing that, that'll come up is just that we get to decide which of those guys we take. But I think that the real differences between like Sar and Risha Shea in terms of talent, I just don't think that we can tell that yet. Um, unfortunately, as everyone knows, this is kind of a, a shallow draft class, um, which probably means this is going to be the year we get number one, just knowing how these things work. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think that if we get number one, it's going to be hard not to take Sar. Um, and so in a lot of ways, I hope that we get number two so that we take Risha Shea because talking about him in our draft breakdown videos, I totally agree. That's that's who I'm hoping for, too. Being that it's kind of a shallow draft class, I don't know that you're going to hear a whole lot of different names. We're all probably going to be talking about the same few people. Um, if we ended up with either one of those guys, it would be interesting to see how they fit in on the team. We don't have such a set team put together right now that someone has to come in and fit into our system. Honestly, we can probably kind of build something around them. So, uh, yeah, I'm hoping for Risha Shea, whether we're at number one or number two. There are a couple of mock drafts that have him at number one now. He's really climbed over the last few weeks. I don't know if I 100% agree that it's a shallow draft class. I just think it's very unknown. It seems like every mock draft is completely different. Every website has these guys in a different order. It's kind of like a crapshoot as far as the order goes. I still think there's a lot of talent out there, though. Um, obviously, the guys you mentioned. But another climber that's a little bit interesting I don't know that much about him, but the last couple of years, Blazers have gone super young in the draft. They drafted, you know, 18, 19 year old guys. And there's a player from Tennessee by the name of Dalton Necht. Necht? I don't, I'm not even sure how to pronounce his last name, but he's a 23 year old rookie. And he was a scoring sensation in college. Great shooter. It seems like has a lot of athleticism. Really, the scouts are pretty high on him right now. Uh, the ringer has him as the number four um, pick in their mock draft. That could be an interesting fit for the Blazers, maybe, if they do slip out of that top three position and he's available. Um, it just seems like he could be a nice compliment. They desperately need shooting right now, floor spacing. He could be a guy that really helps Scoot develop, potentially, and uh, allow space for Shaden to work inside. So if, you know, Risha Shea and um, Sar are off the board, I would take a long look at him. I might even take him over like a Cody Williams um, just because of that shooting ability and the polish that he has. It's just time for the Blazers to win now. You know, they need to start winning. Obviously, they don't have to, like, compete for a championship within the next couple of years, but they need to, the, the tank needs to end. When we were at the game, we all had a impassioned discussion where we said the tank, this has to be the last year of tanking. If they're doing the same thing next year, you know, Joe's got to go. Chauncey's got to go. It's got, It's time for clean ha them to clean house. Jody's got to sell the team. Some big changes. That happen. happen anyways. Amen. But I think that that he could be a guy that just has that polish and changes the dynamics of the court enough to allow the, young players that the Blazers do have to flourish. So he's just a guy that I thought I would mention because we haven't yet. Honestly, this could be a year where somebody does draft an older player higher just because the unknowns, like what you were talking about. I would love it if they all, all the teams do what they always do and value youth and let him drop to the Blazers second pick. You know, obviously, like you said, the mock drafts are all over the place. If he's sitting there with the Blazers war with the pick that they're getting from the Warriors, yes, 100% you take him. 
My only issue really is the well the age, but he's six six. Where That's we not a it? bad size though. Yeah, I know. Especially but... for a shooter, and he has the hops and everything. Yeah, I just I just want size. I, we keep saying it, you know. I think that if the Blazers happen to slide backwards, they're going to be in an all right spot. You know, there'll, there'll be a guy like Buzelis there, which I still like. I still think that they can take a swing on Buzelis. Uh, so if 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 we're if you're sitting there at like the fifth pick or the fourth pick and Buzelis is there, I, I like that pick at that spot. So there are guys in this spot that aren't guards. Don't take a guard that are promising and have potential and have size and have skill. Like there's stuff there for the Blazers, really. Uh, if worst comes to worst and you you slide back to fifth and maybe all those guys are gone, do you do you guys take like a, a Klingon after the tournament run he had with the, with the championship? I know it's a backup big, which you still need wings in that scenario for now. But I'd, ta- I'd take him over like Shepard or one of the, you know, Topic or one of the million point guards that are going to be available. That's that's one thing that's a bit of a bummer with this class is it seems pretty deep actually with the point guards and the guards, which is as we've preached, I think our whole podcast now that Blazers can't really take any more of those. That yeah, Shepard and Dillingham are both going to probably be most likely available. Topic maybe, um, Stefan Castle from you you know UConn, another like combo guard. There's a lot of talent yeah, in these positions. Big, but... yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's about the same size as Nick, like 6'6". Six, six, so, yeah, it's uh... – the, these mock drafts are all over the place, though. Some of these guys, they have them down in the 10 to 15 spot. Some of them, they have them, like, as high as number three. Some even up at number two. It's just – it's all over the place. I think that uh, when the combine happens and the – the draft order gets solidified and the GMs start to show their preferences and stuff. It'll probably become more apparent really quick. I don't want to take Riley's spot. This is where Mike Schmitz needs to come in and say, look, I'm good at this, right? Like (laughs) scoot and everything that everybody had a widely known tier system last year. There was top, the top three players, but this year there's no, there's no Wemby walking through the door. There's no, not even a Brandon Miller, who I, again, really liked last year, walking through the door. There's not a scoot walking through the door as far as prospect level. So because there's no tier system, Mike Schmitz needs to come in and say, look, we got a high pick. I got basically my choice, hopefully. Uh, so let's let's show you I know what I'm doing. So this is a big year for him uh, to see just kind of how, how much of, he's got this. I mean – you got to find a player. The Blazers need to start, if not, you know, competing for a playing spot. They need to, I want to see him in like the 30, mid 30 wins next season, you know, 10 game improvement at least, right? Like got to get some kind of progress going. I think that at this point, the more that I think about it, the more convinced I am that whether we slip to five or whether the Golden State pick turns out to be better than we we thought it might, regardless what we really need to do is is stack up on on wings. Um, we've talked about that a lot on this pod for sure. Uh, and you know, Klingon could end up being really good. He could end up being a, a big guy who you can kind of build around. But I just don't know if we can take that chance again. And I think that we have to take a swing at a couple of wings. You know, if Buzelis is left when we're at five, I think we have to take that. Um, if you know someone like even uh, Ron Holland or Tyler Smith or someone like that Cody. is left. Maybe we look at them um, rather than taking, you know, another seven foot two guy who's probably going to have injury problems. It is crazy. Like the ringer has um, Risa, Risha Shea at number 10. It's just like every mock draft I'm looking at, the order is just completely different. There's uh, I've seen ones with Alex Sar at number five. Obviously there's a lot of with him at number one. Uh, Stefan Castle is as high as number two on the ringers mock draft. It's just, they, I don't think anybody knows at this point, and it's really going to take some the next couple months. You know, let's see, when's the draft? Probably, uh, probably is next it month, May. Early, early July, is that or late June, somewhere in there? Yeah, but yeah, May or June. It's going to take the okay. next couple months, two, two or so months for this all to shake out because I don't think anybody really knows. That's also, exciting. 
Yeah, it is. Uh, we're we're probably gonna watch live. Okay, it's June twenty sixth. You know, we we last year we watched the draft lottery live. That was really fun. We should do that again. And the draft live as well. We shouldn't have to wait long before the Blazers pick twice, which is didn't they make it a two day event this time? So they're gonna stretch it out even more. <laughs> yeah, but you know, we probably won't be live for the second round. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, we're, we're gonna cut her off at, uh, after the Blazers second pick this time. <laughs> Yeah, but and then there's a and then there's a blockbuster trade right after we cut it off. Yeah, the Blazers acquired Damian Lillard from the Milwaukee Bucks. <laughs> anyway, so that'll be fun for DeAndre um, Ayton. I'm excited to see how it shakes out. Another thing that I'll just briefly mention that I think has kind of been touched on, but so much of I think more than last year, a lot of this year is going to be based on like position needs for teams. There's just like team. There's a few teams that need guards and then there's a few teams that don't need them at all. Like the Pistons is an example of a team that probably won't draft another guard. They, it seems like they probably have their backcourt, at least that they're trying for the future. So they could, they probably are going to want wings too. Same with the Blazers. But then there's a, a few others like the Wizards probably would be willing to take a risk on a, you know, high volume ball handler point guard. Um, there was another team. Oh, the San Antonio Spurs are another one that are definitely going to be looking for their point guard of the future to pair with Wimby. So that even kind of shows more how much the draft order is going to matter for where these guys land. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, we'll be around for the draft lottery and NBA draft coming up soon. Most exciting time of the year for Blazers fans. Fourth year in a row. Let's go. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.